Hello everyone, this is Pastor Kevin, and I want to welcome you to the Pastor Study tonight. Every Wednesday around this time, we get together for a brief inspirational message. Hopefully it's something that you can use and make application in your everyday life. I'm here tonight because Pastor Mark has taken some well-deserved time off, and um, so here I am, and it's a real pleasure to be with you all tonight. So, what I'd like to do tonight is begin by asking you a question. Have you ever encountered an unforeseen situation? Something that you didn't expect has come upon you. How do you react? Now, before I go any further, I'll let you know that uh, I'm going to be reading out of Lamentations 3 and then out of the book of John, chapter 1 and chapter 20. So if you want to go there right now and hold your finger there, we'll get there shortly. The reason why I'm asking you about how you respond to different situations you encounter is because as a church, uh, we are going through something new and different to us. We've had this unforeseen opportunity to be part of a ministry that's happening in a faraway country, in Pakistan. And different events have occurred over time, one of which is unfortunately... Uh, our sister, who we're working with there, Shamela, has taken ill and is in the hospital. Now, everything about this opportunity is gray. There's really no black and white. And it's because we're not there. So, things are happening at a distance. There's not a lot of control that we have. And this can breed uncertainty. This situation reminded me um, of a broadcast I had once heard several years ago by Ron Hutchcraft. And he does a daily radio broadcast. And at the time, uh, I had the opportunity during my drive to work to listen to his broadcast every day. So, when I thought of this, I decided to look it up. And <laughs> believe it or not, it was aired in 2002. I remember it like it was broadcast like a year ago. But it had a great impact on me. And the story he told was titled, Dead Coyotes or soaring hawks. Let me recount it for you. Ron was with his team driving on their way to several ministry events that they were going to be putting on. There was enough people that it required two vehicles. Now again, this happened such time ago that the main communication between both vehicles happened to be walkie-talkie. The car in the back would walkie-talkie to the car up front and would comment, Wow! Look at the soaring hawks there up above. Meanwhile, the driver of the car Ron was in was commenting, Wow! Look at the dead coyotes. And the point of Ron's study was outlook. So with that, if you can, I'd like you to turn to Lamentations 3. And where I'm going to be reading is starting in verse... Let's see. Verse 19. 
Here it says, Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of your young children who faint for hunger and in the top of every street. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom you have done this. Shall the women eat their fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. You have slain them in your anger. You have killed them, not pitied. So, if you look at that, that certainly sounds a lot like dead coyotes. In this passage, we see that, oh, I'm sorry, I actually read the wrong selection. Let me try again. In 3, it says, Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that this happens. See, this is the dead coyotes. He's got a very negative outlook. But suddenly, things change in verse 22. So let's read there. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is within each one of us. We have an opportunity to see dead coyotes, or we have the opportunities to see soaring hawks. Now, I know that a lot of this has to do with what's going on in our lives. Sometimes it's what's going on in our lives right now. Sometimes it's a result of hurts, sufferings, disappointments, discouragements, abuses that have come upon us in the past. These color our outlook. These things create hardnesses in our hearts. And oftentimes we guard our hearts so these things do not happen again. So as I thought about this situation some more, I thought of two individuals, two apostles in fact, in the book of John. So if you will turn to me to the first chapter of John, hopefully I'm going to be reading verse 44 and not read the wrong passage again. Here we have a situation that Jesus has just spoken to Andrew, who was a disciple of John the Baptist at the time. He became very excited and believed Jesus was the Messiah. And he told his brother Peter about it. Then Jesus went on and spoke to Philip. And that's where we pick up in 44. Now Philip was of Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, From where do you know me? Jesus answered and said unto him, 
Before that, Philip called you. When you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, King of Israel. Now, if you will turn with me to John 20 and verse 24. Jesus has been crucified. The disciples had huddled together in hiding out of fear. They were concerned for their well-being and they believed their Messiah was dead until Jesus showed up in person. However, Thomas wasn't among them. So, we pick up the encounter in verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see him in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. We have here very similar situations. An encounter with Jesus. We have Nathaniel that just at the spoken word of Jesus believes. And Thomas doubts as a skeptic. This is where Doubting Thomas comes from. Here we have two New Testament biblical examples of what I'm talking about. Each person has value. Each individual, though different, is important. important enough that the disciple John, the apostle, the beloved of Christ, put both of these instances in his book. I'm not here to demean one type of personality and praise the other. We have to work out our situations day to day. We have to believe that the Lord has something for us. Whether we look at a situation as an incredible opportunity or as a very difficult challenge. The whole goal and idea is to trust in Jesus. Now, I'm going to leave off right here. But I hope that you will join me on Sunday because I'm going to pick up right here as I teach Sunday school on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And we're going to go into a lot greater detail about Nathaniel, about Thomas, and the importance of our hearts. So until then, God bless you. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I hope to see you Sunday.